All right, guys, we're back for the final week of 2021 Supercoach. Um, what a what a season! Uh, a lot of injuries, a lot of um, weirdness going on, but uh, we made it. This this the end of it. Uh, ended with a score of 2250. Bad score. Um, had a lot of injuries. Not good. Fell to 10,000 in rank. Terrible. Uh, I really thought I had... Oh, no. Oh, no, that's round rank. 8,500 still. Uh, I feel like I had a better season. I just kind of got unlucky, I guess, with injuries. But that's the name of the game. A lot of it is luck-based. Uh, now, going in... Uh, We'll just quickly go over the team. Uh, it's final week. I'm not here to waste everyone's time. Everyone's trying to watch finals. Finals start in like what, an hour. Um, recording is pretty late. So we've got Laird 149. That's cool. Good way to end the season. Actually, there was a lot of big scores here to end the season. Um, yeah, which was pretty cool. I wish that came a little bit earlier, but you know, you take it still. Laird is going to be an interesting one next year because he's shown he can score. Oh, geez, he hasn't missed the ton since round 12. And if you go to round 8, he's only missed it once. That's pretty cool. Um, his model of consistency, like he, like I just showed, he doesn't miss. But given that next year he will be mid only, like there's, there's no chance he gets defense. Um, I don't think you can start him. That's the thing. Bring him in, definitely. Uh, probably want to wait for a price drop from, so I reckon he's going to be fairly over 600k. Probably in the 660 range, 670 range. Up, uh, I don't know what the algorithm is going to look like, but yeah, that's that's just a guess. Uh, yeah, I, I'd say keep your eye on him next year. I think most final teams will still have him in it. Stewart missed. Uh, He's out for the finals, out for the season, and we'll check in on him in preseason. Next year, I'm going to really focus on injuries and try not to bring in players that have an injury history. Uh, it's burnt me. Injuries have just been terrible this year. Um, gee, if we go through the team, uh, this is another video, but I had a look at in, uh, trades and stuff, and I think. Of the 34 trades I had this year, 25 were injury trade outs, something like that. Um, 22, most of them were injury trades. So, yeah, next year just got to get better with that. Lloyd 154, um, that's cool. Ah, uh, that really caught me off guard. I did not see this coming. There was really no indication of it. Like he's been just a hundred, just a hundred, 108. 112, 154, his highest score of the season in the final round. Showing that, again, you do have to pick him next year. You uh, can't go without him. Short, 117. No Hooli in, so I did sort of expect this. Um, you know, I, I thought maybe just 105 or something like that, but 117? Hey, we'll take it, even if it's the final week. Whitfield, bad game. Uh, next year, no GWS players. He could come out the gate, average 120, not interested. Uh, Stephen May, another one next year, not really interested in. I only brought him in this year because his price was so good. Where was it? 444? No, 408. Around here is when I brought him in. Probably this week here. Too good to pass up on the price. Uh, next year, unless the same happens, he gets concussed on like a 5 and drops heaps. Um, yeah, but just not looking likely. The bench didn't play. Onto the midfield, where they were very mid this week. Um, ah, yeah, I forgot where I was at. I think uh, I was saying Steele, McRae, uh, neither were amazing. Like 129, 113, you take it. Um, especially final week when nothing really matters. Unless you're like in top 100, top 200, something like that. But uh, yeah, nothing really matters. Steel, I think you have to pick him next year. I think uh, the template midfield next year um, is Steel, McRae, Bont, maybe. Bont, I'm 
I want to say he just you have to start him it's non-negotiable considering like he's just so good at the start of the year right like I think first two okay so you missed it twice but then this stretch here you can't miss uh, I missed a lot of it this year I think I brought him in like here probably a bit earlier maybe like here-ish you can't miss that uh, it puts you so far behind in rank if you're playing for league it makes you lose league matches you can't yeah you can't pass that up so that's like the three and then Oliver um, slide him in probably a bit more non-negotiable than Bont just because of how he plays uh, whereas Bond can get stuck forward, Oliver not so much. Oliver can get stuck on the bench, but that's like once in a blue moon. Other than that, Brayshaw, he had a good end to the season, but a bit of consistency issues with him. So uh, again, I'm not too sure on how he goes next year. A year older, maybe a bit more mature. I don't know. Um, they always say he's durable, and um, he hasn't been injured. He's just uh, got suspended that one week, and that was it. Merritt. Merritt's always the same in Supercoach, it feels. Where it, it's good to have. You don't have to start him. If you do, it's not too bad, but you don't have to. You can always just bring him in. He's really one of the more um, consistent players like over Supercoach, over his career. He's always like getting good scores and when he gets bad scores he gets pretty bad scores um yeah uh would i start merit next year i did this year uh probably not just seeing like the price of uh all the guys i want to start next year i think i can skip out on merit we'll look at that a bit closer though walsh 87 um i think walsh definitely a positive season everyone that started him you, you can't really complain that much. Like, you had three weeks good scores, and then one bad one against Gold Coast, which you could say that you expected more, right? Because uh, Gold Coast just aren't really a great team, so you'd want better. But then he followed up with 144 against Port, where you probably expected a pretty bad score because Port, I think Port have given up the second least amount of points to supercoach midfields so like the opposing supercoach midfield which obviously they don't play for but like that's just an interesting stat um yeah I, I think walsh great season next year probably not a starting candidate uh was only one this year because he had a good price start at, at the start of the year but definitely someone to keep your eye on lions i don't know I, i'm kind of torn on this pick of, like he had a good year I can't say this was a bad year it's just I feel like when I expected big games the Gold Coast one here he didn't really provide but then saying that there's games 152 141 so I guess it's not all that true to say he didn't give out big games it's just uh, for his price maybe I expected slightly better I'm not too sure but next year Lions, Lions is an option, he always is. That Brisbane midfield just works in such a good way for Supercoach. Lions, Orko, Neil. Uh, Neil, I'm thinking about starting, but I just want to see what his preseason's like, considering that this year he was like battered with injuries. Uh, and then finishing off, Bont, like I said, probably to start him. Like, he's probably pretty non negotiable to start. Um, but we'll see, you know, th things can happen, maybe his price is just a bit weird, uh, that you can't afford him if you want like a, you know, an all-around team, which is what I go for, right, I, a lot of people go with a stack in one line, I think this year I stacked defense a little bit too heavy, whereas I should have spread it out a little bit more, um, but yeah, you know, some people play their way and well, I'm only in the top 8,000, so that means it's 8,000 people better. So, got to improve somehow. Josh Kelly, 124. GWS players are banned from Supercoach. I never, ever am bringing another one in. 
if Cali went to 400k, averaging 120, I'll take someone out. I'll take a rookie at basement price. <laughs> he just... These guys get so injured, dude. Like, you're always missing... They're always, you know, when you need them, like a finals game or a week where you kind of had bad scores all around, you kind of need just that one score to give you a reasonable total score. They just disappeared, you know, injured, suspended, um, COVID, something's up, you know, always happens. It, it's not really fair for me to blame the players, but it's just, it keeps happening. At some point, coincidence is no longer coincidence. So, I mean, I always, I personally think the GWS health team isn't that good. You know, uh, just look at how they treat injuries. They'll say three to four weeks when it's actually like six weeks. That's my personal thing. But um, maybe saying like 400k and 120 average and not taking it it's a bit too far. But you know what I mean uh, as a metaphor. Uh, they, you just can't can't rely on him. Maybe as the final pick in your team, with you know, you just have enough money to get one. Go with that. But honestly, just try to avoid them next year. Gorn and Grundy. Gorn off year. <laughs> That's crazy. 120 average off year. How's that even possible? He just had halves where he did nothing. Like. This North game, it, I feel like it was one of those games where half the game was just up forward or back in defense, kind of doing nothing, not taking intercepts. Like, when he's in defense, his role is to take crowd intercepts and not real intercepts, but just be a body there that ends up taking a mark. But, like, this stretch here, 103, 100, 102, 100 here, 91. You didn't see this from Gorn last year. Um... Or maybe you did, and I've got short-term memory loss. Hmm. I'll say it's a down year, but not a terrible year. He's obviously still the best ruck. I mean, all Australian thing was last night. I don't have a problem with any of the selections. Uh, if I, if there was one that I was to kind of call out, probably be Alia Alia. Honestly, I think he should make it, but uh, between him, Harris Andrews, Jacob Reedering. If you want to say one over the other, I don't really care, but... Um, Gorn was the All-Australian captain, so he obviously had a good year. Um, just a bit down from what we expected. Grundy... This was an off year. This one I'm comfortable saying was an off year. Uh, but then the last year wasn't the best for him either, so that's back-to-back -back off years. Maybe... It's time to remove the set and forget. Or just modify it. Maybe it's Darcy and Gorn set and forget. But Darcy's got a terrible injury history. It feels like every time he comes off the ground. Not even just at the end of games. Just off to take his five minute break. It always looks like he's clutching at something. His, ham his hamstring, his knee, his foot, his shoulder. It always feels like he's injured. I don't know if I want to go through that <laughs> after this year. Maybe not. So maybe this is still the template for rocks. Um, once it gets to like January and pickers and stuff come out, we'll have a look. Hall, Zebel, Dale. Well, Hall and Zebel have just been godsends, honestly. 300k and 200k kept them. As, as soon as they were in, you knew you were keeping them. Are they the only ones? Yeah, they are the only forwards left from the starting team. They really say, like, without these two, if I had missed Hall or I had missed Siebel, I'd easily been like 15k rank. These two saved my ass, honestly. Um, Hall, I, I think he was snubbed from all Australian. Uh, this man has brought a new way to play off halfback. Just handball and uncontested kick and sometimes run forward but you know just focus on the uncontested stuff and lose the game great way to play um look at this from round seven uh, from uh, onwards from round five 
only missed the ton once. <laughs> That's got to be one of the best super coach stretches in the last five years, honestly. Like, look at the scores. He's put 141, 139 final week. This is... I don't know, maybe I'm going a bit far with it, but uh, I think that this is just one of the better stretches all time. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. I think next year you start him, honestly, in defense. I might, depending on his price. His price is going to be insane, but uh, we'll see. I think you start him. Zebul, on the other hand, started the season really good. Hall coming in did impact his scoring. He didn't get close to 155 again. But uh, I don't know about starting him next year. Possibly. Uh, it depends, because he'll be just defender as well. Do you really want to start Hall and Zebul? They, they're pretty consistent, right? Like, more weeks than not, they, do, they both tunned. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll look at that. I think there's a lot of other options. So, that, that's one that you just have to wait and see. The rest, though. Dale, all Australian, but uh, I personally wasn't too happy with his season. I think it was uh, super coach wise very hit and miss. If I didn't have to bring him in, I wouldn't have brought him in. Hind was a good option at the price, but overall not amazing. Langford was just injured. I got two scores out of him. And Shea sucked. Uh, that's a never again as well. Richmond players, apart from Short, I think Short still has a chance just because uh, no Hooli, right? Uh, I can't see his role changing. He's just going to be that kickoff halfback. Oh, He's, yeah, um, but Bolton though, Dusty, no chance. I'm not bringing in either of them all year. And there's apparently talks about Chera going there. Uh, I, I wouldn't pick him either. And uh, that's pretty much it for the team. So uh, thanks everyone for sticking around for the season. If you made it this far in the video, this is already 17 minutes. I said I was going to take it easy. Um, but yeah, thanks for sticking around for the season. Uh, next year, I hope to just upgrade stuff, upgrade thumbnails, production. Like, just I'm not a fan of how there's nothing here. I want to put a green screen back here. Uh, but we'll see. Until then, though, make sure you check out the uh, EPL fantasy I'm doing. Um, I'm having a lot of fun with that, watching soccer, which I haven't watched in a long time. Uh, or I say long time, but I just watch it on and off. Um, but yeah, until next season, in Supercoach, tasty out.